Hello guys and welcome back to the Barbells of Banter podcast. I'm your host Cam Sully and I'm joined today by Maureen Sabre. And Maureen is a personal trainer like myself and she's also a um, specialist, a wellness and fitness nutrition specialist, um, specialising in working with mums, a bit like myself really. Um, Maureen, how are you doing? How are you? I'm great. How are you? Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Um, So, obviously, judging by your accent, you are currently in in France, is that right? Yes, I'm French, yeah. And I'm currently in France. (laughs) Uh, Where about you in Paris that you mentioned? I've been. Are you in Paris, did you say? Yeah. Uh, Close by, yes, close to France. I've been, I, I've been once, um, but I, I I can't remember. I, I took my wife because she always wanted to go, and I can't remember. What, I just fi- I just found the cheapest sort of hotel I could get at the time because it was very last minute. Something I regret to this day. Uh, <laughs> I think I was on like the seventeenth stopment, and and it. it yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a back back street part um, of the city. Um, we we got into the room and it was like a little shoebox, <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there was a drug deal going outside at the time. <laughs> the romance wasn't there, at the time, but the city itself was <laughs> it was was amazing. Um, we did all the usual stuff, you know, the love and. Uh, one of my favourite moments of my of my life, honestly, was um, it wasn't long after the after the bombings, so security level was very high at the time. But in a weird way, you felt quite comforted by that. And I remember sitting on the green, wanted to see the, the Eiffel Tower, and we just had a, we just had a little picnic, right, just just in front of it. Where the, the where the, the beacon was coming on the lights, but what was so weird is you had armed guards, right, with 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 mm-hmm. um, famous rifles, but just kind of stood near the tree line, right, and 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 it was so bizarre. Normally, I'd find that intimidated. I'd find it intimidating here if it was in London or Manchester here in the UK, but it was just so bizarre. And, and all you could see is all these couples and stuff. Um, but then just these armed guards stood near the tree line and it was the most surreal experience, but it's, it's up there as one of my fondest memories. It, it, it was beautiful. Uh, I loved it. Um, can't mm-hmm. say so much about Manchester near where I am. Um, not quite as romantic, <laughs> but <laughs> I digress. So, yeah, Marie, you um, tell me about, how how you why you got into obviously you you got into personal training very much like myself um tell me a little bit about why specifically did this started for you what what got you into we'll we'll get into the whole mum stuff because that's a very similar journey to me um yes. I, I didn't start as a personal trainer wanting to work with with mums it was never crossed my mind and it's quite a common thing with personal trainers and i train personal trainers so i understand i wanted to do the usual yeah i'm going to work with athletes and i'm going to be earning 100 pound an hour i'm going to be like and, and that and what happened for me personally is i found my calling in a weird way like my it sounds a bit a bit corny but I like to say my client found me rather than the other way. I quickly realized, actually, this is who I'm good at helping. And, and I've studied more. I took more qualifications about hormones, menopause, all this stuff to, to educate myself. And, and I love it. And my clientele now and my listeners most likely on here is usually mums. So that was my calling. What? How did this sort of come about for you? Yeah, it's funny you're talking about it because I was wondering, it's, yes, it's not common for a man to specific, especially working with uh, moms. So it's, yeah, it's funny you're talking about it. But for me as a mom, I'm a mom, uh, I got into it after my second um, uh, pregnancy. So I have two children. 
um, for both both pregnancy went pretty well, but the first one I had an emergency section because of uh, placenta uh, that got detached at eight and a yeah. half months. Then for the second uh, pregnancy went well, but then my uh, son had the umbilical cord around his neck, uh, and we had to do an emergency section too. Yeah. Then my my second son got really sick. Um, he had epilepsy. And um, so he got it. We didn't know at first it was epilepsy. He was really sick, and he went through a lot of things. And we finally knew it was epilepsy, and uh, it was tough for me. You know, I went to depression. I was out of shape. I didn't take care of myself at all. It was all for my mm-hmm. kids, you know. And I completely let go of myself. Yeah. And after seeing this little baby, you know, fighting for his life and. Like, wow, he was able to do that, you know. I was like, I have to do something for myself, for my kids. I have to fight for them to be stronger, to be healthier. So I just, and because of the two C-sections, I lost any sensation in my lower abdomens. I couldn't hold the plank. I couldn't do, I didn't have enough strength. So I just started walking out by myself, um, and then started to feel better, like mentally and physically. And just um, mom started to ask me, give me advice. What, how, how are you doing? And uh, can you help me? So it just started like that. I mean, I just did my own transformation and started to help other moms and just went from there. And now it's been 10 years. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's been... Uh, coming to eight years for me, so similar sim- similar story, um, and obviously it pulls on the heartstrings we mentioned there because I've recently found out I am epileptic, um, and it took mm. a year before I found out. I knew, I just knew, um, but the doctors that I'd been to didn't want to know. Oh, it's anxiety, oh, you know, headaches yeah. and, and all that. And it, it was just like I knew, I knew. I was having seizures and it took me yeah, over a year before I finally got the scans and I had the diagnosis and, and finally now I'm on medication for it. But similar to yourself, I know it's obviously a lot scary for you because this is your, this is your baby, this is your child, but I can understand that frustration, confusion where you know something's off, but it's, it's, yeah, it seems to be the healthcare professionals. They just don't, I got the impression they kind of passed the book exactly. a little bit because they're a bit – until it took me a year to get in front of a neurologist and the, the neurologist, mm-hmm. within five minutes of me explaining my symptoms, like, oh, yeah, they, you know, for, mm. <laughs> here, here's your medication. And, and my wife was sat next to me because he never outright said it. And my wife had to say, so c- can I just confirm, sorry, it, he, he has epilepsy. And he literally went, yeah. There, there was no hesitation, and it's frustrating that it took so long. But I could that that pulls on my heartstrings because my wife also had epilepsy as a child, um, oh. which is a bit close to your situation, and and she kind of grew out of it, supposedly, and she used to have absent seizures, so she would have what they used to call petty mal epilepsy, so she would just lose consciousness, so she wouldn't necessarily have uh, seizures, uh, tonic-clonic seizures, but she would just go, <laughs> she'd just like walk into lampposts and stuff, um, which is, I laugh at mm. her when she tells me because it, it's funny to her, but it's not funny. I guess it's it was a scary time for when I've heard it from her mum. So, so my mother-in-law, her mum, had a very similar experience. You know, she had to deal with this uh, from the age of sort of seven, and then she grew out of it at 12. And I always worry that it's still there in the background. And the irony is she's now married an epileptic. So <laughs> I completely oh, yeah. I completely understand me. So obviously you've been doing do it for ten years. What what sort of because I tend to find that with with, with personal trainers, it, you tend to have your own interest in fitness first. And then very much like you said, mm. people you you then people start seeing what you're doing and you start getting asked for help, right? People go, Oh, can you help me? And then you'll go, Oh, I could probably do this as as, as a career. Um but obviously you mentioned before with after like C sections and stuff, you know, and you struggled to hold the planks and stuff. So 
I just want to go yeah. back a bit, like when when that was happening to you, like how did you? Because I'll have a lot of listeners right now that may have had C sections or may have had uh, surgery near their abdomen that, that made them weak. How did you recover from that? Because I just want to go back a little bit about, from that part of your your life where you you were struggling. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it took time, of course. And that's what I do even with my clients already, like listen to your body, take your time. Because every time I will try to do some kind of exercise, I will, it will be swollen by uh, the C-section. So I will take it easy and just do a um, just body weight workout. Uh, and I love to do susp- uh, suspension trainings. Mm, um, so just using my core, just trying to as much as I could not put too much pressure, go slowly and just months after months, I could feel the difference. And now I'm able to hold the plank. I mean, I'm, well, my core is stronger than ever. So it can get better. Um, like women, they need to know that it can get better. It will go better, but you know, have to listen to your body and take it easy. I mean, that's the most important part. Yeah. I think that's good to know because I think a lot of women they don't think it can get better that you know i i yeah. i know i know you probably do maureen uh, and so do i where i'll get messages um very common from a lot of mums like you know i've had a c-section obviously as a result of that there is no strength there so a lot of people think oh, you know i'm never going to be i can't i can't do sit-ups because of this and and, and i'll say to people you 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 don't have to do crunches and sit ups like there's no. there's ways to build up that strength back especially in with the core and the, and the irony here and I think you'll agree with me is that you should be strengthening your abs straight away right to try and build that back but what new mum has got time to do that mm. um, and and that I think that adds to the problem and I think that a lot of the mums that I end up working with they they're now uh, one, two, even three kids into their into their motherhood, and where they probably should have started working on their core strength straight away. Like you said, from a practicality standpoint, no one's going to do that. You've just had a baby. The last thing you're going to do is go, oh, "Hang on a minute, let me do my let me do my core workout in the morning." But because of that, anatomically, that seems to be what then causes problems: lower back pain and 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 posture yes. and stuff like that so it's good for you to share that because i want people to know that no it can you can get your strength back it's just going to take a, a, a little bit a bit of work so you so you, you you've obviously had children yourself you've obviously had that situation that scared you with, with your child with epilepsy you've obviously had the, the two emergency c-sections which is you know been difficult for you and and then obviously here you are now helping helping mums uh, achieve the same what is what sort of obviously you've had your own experience but what was that um you had messages and stuff but what was that real drive for you to go actually i want to do this i want to help you know women and mums i want to help them i want to help them do the same thing as myself It's especially the depression because I had a pretty bad depression after the, the my second uh, having my second child, and I was yeah sad. Even though I had a kid, you know, I was always especially with the epilepsy, I was always scared for him. I was always something's going to happen to him, and and it's a lot to deal with, you know. And by starting working out and feeling better, and I was feeling better mentally too. And my depression went away. And uh, for me, it was really important. Like I was, wow, I could help other women do the same. I mean, I see how I was feeling now, how I am feeling right now. And I feel so much better. Like the weight, like not just the weight, like the pounds on the, the scale, you know, but just I was feeling lighter, happier. And I wanted to share that with women. I was like, I learned, I did it by myself, but some women might not be able to do it by themselves. And I would be, I would like to be there to show them how to do that. Out of shape, I was letting myself go. And um, once I started working out, I was losing weight, getting in shape, but I also mentally was feeling way better. And uh, my depression went away. And I just wanted to share that with other mom because I was, I, I did it by myself, but I was like, some moms might not be able to do it by themselves. 
and I just wanted to be there for them. Like you can like know that they they can get out of this depression and and feel better and be happier with their family. Um, where where do you stand on the, the obviously the nutrition side as well? Because obviously. Our main job is to do with exercise, and we know that, you know, but obviously yeah. a big part of our job, whether we planned it or not, is is to deal with the nutrition side. And obviously, you know, dietitians are the, is where re- really that sort of thing comes in specifically, but what, obviously when it comes to mums, I tend to find a diet is a lot more um, difficult to, to navigate around because you have children. And you have to cook food for the children. And children, as I'm sure yours might be, Marine. I know my my daughter is. You know, very fussy. So it can be you. You have so many more challenges as a as a mum, young mum. It, it doesn't matter what stage of motherhood you are. It's a challenge all the way. And um, yes. what 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 issues do you tend to find, and what advice do you tend to give when it comes to the whole nutrition side? Yes. So. I really personalize my thing. It's always like personalized for every client, but the thing is, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like you just stick to all food and serve all food to your family. And you can, you do it. There is an infinite possible possibility. You know, it's, you can share meals. The big thing is to share meals with your family and make it fun. I love to say, okay, make a, like a salad bar bring all the ingredients on the table and let your kids pick their own thing and just make it fun and share that with your your kids because if they learn they see that kids they do what you're doing usually they don't do what you say they do what you're doing so show them that it can be fun to eat veggies and just share yeah, with your family and it does the main thing it doesn't have to be perfect all the time don't put too much pressure on yourself and that's what's important for moms. We moms already have so much to deal with. Yeah. So, yeah. I I tend to, I agree, and I tend to think that people overthink it a little bit because yeah. you know they think weight loss or getting fit. Right, we need to cut carbs, or you know, and and I need to um, you know, eat chicken. <laughs> and rice and <laughs> and like you say, it, it, I, I I bash my head against the wall repeating myself to people, and, and and I understand because unfortunately we have the diet industry to contend with that are telling people one thing, which is nonsense, and then we we're, we're yeah. here to actually say to people, no, it's okay, you can, it, it doesn't have to be that complicated, but I think because people's desperation and desire to lose weight is so strong that they'll do anything to make it happen as quick as possible. And mm. a lot of the time I have to re- spend a lot of my time with, with, with my clients and my audience saying, just slow down a little bit. You know, it, it, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so what more specifically in terms of tips, let, let's say here, here in the UK, obviously, um, and I know France is much different but in the weather weather department at this time of the year, but, you know, you mentioned like salads and stuff, but a lot of the time here um, when the weather's colder and the, the, the nights are darker, people might not be thinking so much salads and stuff. So what advice would you have to people sort of now in, in autumn, fall, where – you know, it is a bit colder. People are craving a bit more warmer comforts and, and, and stuff. I, I tend to mention the slow cooker a lot. So, you know, yes. you mentioned the salon bar stuff before, which is great. But if people might be asking now, okay, that, that, that's great, Marine, but at this time of the year, my kids want warmer food, you know, and, and we've got Christmas coming up, so everything's a bit busy. What would your advice be there? Yes, of course. And, First of all, I want to say when I say salad, um, it's just not lettuce. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. I like to make it like add some. You need some protein, so add some proteins, mm-hmm. and it can be like there's some good like nuggets, but you know, made with real chicken. Mm-hmm. You can make some nuggets and some seeds and some nuts, and you can add as many veggies on into it. You know, it's not just lettuce when I say it's mm-hmm. a salad, of course. <laughs> and um, 
And also, yes, for right now, like for my uh, clients, I love to share recipes using uh, pumpkins, all mm. these kind of squashes. And you can make it like, um, it's like the sweet potatoes too. You make uh, sweet potato fries, um, zucchini fries. Um, I love to do uh, stuffed uh, pumpkins. Um, I mean, yeah, there is an infinity of possibility. Just so what's always like I told my clients, uh, if they walk out, they need some proteins. So just pick a source of proteins, whatever you want. Uh, personally, I, I'm plant based. So I'm focusing on tofu and, but my clients, I don't make my clients go that way. So if they want to add some chicken, some beef, whatever they want, some veggies, um, it doesn't have, like you said, the slow cooker is great. Uh, just mix some veggies, some spices, some beef, some meat, anything. It doesn't have to be complicated. So a warm a bone broth is great also during the the winter. Um, we really stick to all food because I work mainly with uh, American clients and Americans tend to go to processed food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it might sound normal for some people when I say it's all food, but... Not for everybody. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. just go to pick any produce you want, any veggies, and add some colors and some meats and some spices, and it works. Yeah, and I, I also have been talking a lot recently about the advantage of the world at the moment is people have got so many kitchen um, electronic devices added to the mix now. You've got a slow cooker, you, you know, air fryers are yeah. in most people's kitchens now rice cookers you know there's so many there's been a boom in the last sort of five years i think <laughs> where so many um yeah they're expensive people need to have the space for, for all this stuff you know we, we've got a little cupboard under the stairs where the, uh, the slow cooker lives air fryer lives but i tend to find that these things are there to help you to make life yeah. so so even now is so much easier in my opinion to work on your diet than it's ever been before because you have so many more of these um devices the, these appliances that are designed to help you so at this time of the year you mentioned pumpkin before you know this, I, I recently posted a, a, a a pumpkin stew recipe i did a, a post about just five recipes you can throw into a slow cooker you know and the, those yes. things like and, and then i did a post about snacks um obviously we're dealing with mum so with kids and stuff around halloween you know um pumpkin you mentioned butternut squash before you can make you can make your homemade fries using butternut squash and pumpkins it takes a bit of work but it can be done and and, and sometimes i think that People know that, but if the reality is, and as you know, and I'm, I'm sure we have to constantly remind people, is the work does need to be put in, but there are now things to make life easy for you. Uh, slow cooker is perfect for a bu busy mums, right? Let's say busy mums might yes. be working mums. They might have to do the school run in the morning. Then they might perhaps they're working from home or they're going to work, you know, or perhaps they're, they're, they're staying at home. Um, perhaps it's a situation like yourself, Marine, where you've had a, a, a poorly child, so you've had to be home with them a bit more. The slow cooker, all you need to do, you can prep the night before, get it all thrown in. You can make casserole, stews, stuff that it doesn't necessarily have to be the healthiest recipe, but the fact that it, you said whole foods, right? It's whole food, yes. it's not processed. You know, you could throw a stew in, throw some veggies in, throw potato, throw your meats in, um, or, you know, like tofu and stuff like you mentioned, if, you, if you're plant-based, and it, leave it for eight hours, and it's going to cook for you for eight hours. And then by the time it gets to the evening, you've come back from work, it's done. All you have to do is portion it, and it's done. It's good for the kids, it's good for you. And that, a slow cooking now, you can pick up for, uh, you know, 40, 50 pounds, so 60 euros etc and, it, and it's a bit like these things are designed to help you and the air fryer is a bit more modern but the air fryer throw it in and it, so you, we're mentioning yeah. making homemade fries butternut you know butternut squash fries pumpkin stuff 
make it. You don't need to get a chip pan anymore with loads of fat and grease. In the air fryer, done. It, takes, so, it doesn't take much time, and it's it's delicious. I mean, the sweet potato fries, it's great. You add some spices on it, and even the kids, I know my kids love it. So, What are your thoughts? Um, obviously, just going back to your your child with, with, with epilepsy, because obviously this is something close to my heart as well. Um, one of the things that I keep coming across uh, ever since my diagnosis is the keto diet, uh, and it's something that... Mm. So far, no neurologist has suggested this to me because I'm responding well to my anti-seizure medication. However, obviously, as a fitness professional and I have an extensive knowledge about nutrition, I've always stayed away from keto. It's never been because in my mind, I'm like, well, your brain likes to feed off carbohydrates, right? It needs the carbs. So I've always been a bit mm, when it comes to keto however uh, as far as my journey with epilepsy has been concerned it's something that keeps popping up is the ketogenic diet recommended i'm not sure if that's something that you've encountered w- 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 with your child in it or not so i wanted to get your take on on what you think not just the keto diet but these specific diets you know keto uh, we're talking about plant-based as well because that's what you are now i've been pescatarian yeah. in the past where I've, I've any it's more like a mediterranean diet basically fish yes. and, and veg so i've tried certain things what are your thoughts on on specific kind of diets like that yes like so you were talking about the keto diet and um i yeah, it's been really popular those past few years but i i think like for my clients um it's too much to think about like i'm going to do keto i'm going to do plant based don't put a name on it just heal all, it all food of course if you don't want to eat meat go plant based but it's it's what you prefer you know it's your preference keto diet i know it's great uh, in some uh, especially for your the health uh, like you said epilepsy some kind of cancer it helps too so if you have some uh, medical issues you might have to pick a more specific diet but yeah. otherwise i mean don't try from my experience it doesn't work like on long term you know if a client say okay i'm gonna do keto diet i'm gonna do uh, this all those diets it mm. works for a few months and then usually because it's so difficult to keep up with that in a mm. regular day uh, especially as a mom i mean you can't really share a keto diet with your kids so it's mm-hmm. you're gonna have to do your own meals on the side. So it's not go it's going to to work on a l- lifetime. So my what I say to my client: don't stress about it. Just don't pick a name for your diet. Just eat whatever whole food, whatever you want for as long as it's a healthy food, of course. And it's uh, yeah, you don't have to pick a specific diet. I agree, and I think I think people. I've I've talked about this with with dietitians and stuff on the show before, and and I had a I had a dietitian on last year or at the start of this year, and and she hit the nail on the head with um the idea that I think people like the idea of rules. Mm. So, like keto, for example, yeah, follow this. Don't eat carbs, but only eat this. It almost gets people excited, like, oh, yeah, if I do this, this is a quick way to lose weight. Or if you talk about, you know, Slimming World diet companies that follow points-based systems, well, well, these these certain foods are full of sins. They've got loads of points, so I need to avoid them. Uh, But these are sin-free, so as long as I eat this food. And and I think it doesn't matter which approach you take. It's all the same thing, which is a calorie deficit, right? But I think people like rules because it keeps them in check or they think it does but in reality exactly what you said it might work temporarily but that's not sustainable how yeah. how long are you going to you know i mentioned before about doing um i was pescatarian but i did that nothing to do with weight loss i did that for my own uh, a ethical choices and b it, I, I i'm an asthmatic and what I found was when I was pescatarian and I cut out pork and beef 
um, my asthma, or uh, atopic conditions, asthma, eczema, all that stuff, disappeared. They went. Oh. And I started eating meat again because my wife and I was trying for a baby and, and I needed I needed that magnesium, I needed that testosterone coming from the meat again. So we kind of fell back into it. And we've been meaning to revert back to a more plant-based diet ever since. But I guess that's the point, isn't it, Marina? that we've talked about that these things may be fine for health benefits. But when we're talking about general weight loss, by trying to adopt one of these specific diets, all you're doing is making life harder for yourself. You hit the nail on the head with the keto. You're not going to put your kids on a keto diet. <laughs> exactly. um, and and it's, I, I did a post about dogs recently, right, which is – you know, you would if your dog needed to lose weight. If you took your your dog or any animal, a, a cat or dog, but usually dogs, right? And you took your dog to the vet, and the, and, the, and you know the vet goes right. Your dog's overweight, got health concerns. We need them to lose weight. You don't go and put your dog on a keto diet. You don't go and get them a subscription for smoothies and Juice Plus. You you don't you don't make them follow Slimming World. No. You take them on more walks, <laughs> and you and you yeah. make them eat less. But for some reason, Marine humans, we, we tend to know that when it comes to our animals. But when it comes to us, oh no, 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 no! We've got every excuse under the sun, right? No, no, I've got kids. Uh, you know, I suffer from thyroid problems. Or I've got you know hormones, menopause. So I can't. That doesn't work for me. And it's like no, it does. The same rules apply but it's just going to be harder for you. And there's someone like yourself who's had two emergency C-sections. You, you, you've been there. You've had these issues. You've had the, the, the situation of dealing with your, your children with, with illnesses, and you've still managed to maintain your fitness. It just goes to show that it can be done. It might just be a little bit harder for you, you know? Yes, exactly. Yet. And uh... I I went and um, I just uh, turned like uh, switched to a plant based nutrition like six years ago, but just because I was start I, I used to eat a lot of meat of course because it was like for my proteins I would go to chicken meat and um, but um, I just well, it was for my gut my digestion I had always issues and I knew I I heard like I, from the, what I learned in nutrition I was, like need more fibers and plant-based nutrition will be helpful. So I just switched to that, felt better. So it works for me and I feel better. Um, but it's my choice, you know, and it's because I had those issues, I decided that at first. Um, same for uh, gluten, especially for my sons. Um, I learned that gluten wasn't great, uh, uh, even for the development of my kids, and it will help to go to a gluten-free uh, diet. So I switched to that too, but, and my sons too, and they're feeling better. It works for us, but you know, it just step by step, just a few things that you switch, you change, like just listen to your body. It's what I said. If you have an issue, okay, where, where is it coming from? What should I change? But you don't have to change the, everything. <laughs> it's yeah. not, uh, it's putting too much pressure on yourself to try to change and follow a strict diet. Yeah, yeah. I was switching over to exercise a little bit. You mentioned your sons. Like, what, what when you, I imagine when, when your sons see their mum exercising a lot, you know, the mum, the mum's a, a fitness professional. Um, what are their thoughts on exercise? Do they get excited about it? Do, do they think, oh, God, no, here, here goes mum again, you know? Um, a, a day at that age where, obviously, if, if you've got young kids, it's, uh, I know my daughter is coming to me, and she's very lazy, very lazy. Um, but she's she's sixteen, so she 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 has been lazy for a long time. But she's now just getting to that point at sixteen where she's like, um, she said to me only only two weeks ago. How, um, how, bear in mind, she's never asked me this before until recently, but now she's at that age where she's getting a bit more conscious of herself, and, and she's yes. you know doing her A levels. How do I get abs? Right, that was finally asked me this question, and I'm like, okay. Rather than telling you this, I'm going to be like, right, let, let's let's try and delve into the why first. What? Why do you why do you want abs? You're 16. What are you worried about? So, oh, you, you know, I, I just I, I just want I want abs. I went right, okay. 
and and I'm thinking, all right, she's got to this point now where she's now asking for advice. Of course, I gave her stuff to do, um, and she hasn't done them. So <laughs> it it wasn't the right time. So w- w- when it comes to mums and stuff who have kids, and, and exercise might be a barrier there because particularly if you've got young kids, uh, you might not have access to a gym. Um, you might want to do online workouts, okay, workouts from home, but your kids are running around everywhere, you know, that you're not finding time to do it. So how, first of all, how how do you fit your exercise in around having kids? And then what is your advice to mums who might be listening to this to incorporate exercise into their busy schedule? Yes, yeah. So it, I, I know it's not easy, but for me personally, I, it's like it's my priority. So every morning I wake up earlier. So I had to, yes, put my alarm earlier. And I get it done first thing in the morning. I go to the gym. If uh, if someone can stay with my kids, otherwise I'll just work out at home. And uh, for my clients, like all my clients, uh, since I've been doing, uh, in the past I was doing in-home personal training. So I was going to my client's house. So I was really there. So sometimes the baby was walking around or the um, her mom, or, but still she was getting her exercise in. And now I'm doing online trainings. So just, uh, I, I call my clients, it's really one-on-one calls with my clients. So they're in their home. So it's, at least it's easier. They don't have to get ready, go to the gym and they're there. If the kids are around, it's fine. And um, same as nutrition doesn't have to be perfect for workouts. Uh, just, just move. I mean, and other days just go for a walk with your kids. Just go to the playground. Just go, just move. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be uh, okay. I'm going to go to the gym and lift uh, so much weight. It's not that. I mean, of course, it depends your of your goals. Uh, but uh, since we're talking about moms who just want to be in shape, to just feel better, just move and yeah, lift some weight, and it can be um, yes, can be easy and incorporate into the routine. Uh, make it a priority. Mm. I, I always find that. I, I'm, I've been leaning more recently into trying to encourage my clients to try and get the kids involved uh, in the exercise. You know, obviously, bearing in mind the age range and stuff. But um, I had a client who she did this. She, so she'd do my workouts, uh, online workouts, and she she would get the kids would get excited about it, right? Because they're seeing their mum doing all these. She'd make the exercises fun, like for them to watch, and that they were entertained by it. She's doing squats and she's doing all these things, and they'd come and get involved, and and they'd yes. be doing little because it's all body weight, you know, it's not weight bearing stuff, and and they'd be doing it. And she got to a point, and she she put it on her story, and she tagged me in it, and then um, she got to a point where she asked her son, "It's like, right, would you rather go out uh, go out and play or or something like that, or would you rather exercise?" And the kids running around the room going, exercise, yeah. <laughs> she, she created this environment for her children. She had three three children, all boys, and a uh, girl and, and two boys, sorry. And, and basically she created this environment where she made workout time, mummy's workout time, a fun time, and they'd get involved in, and, and stuff. And, and so, you know, w- what are your thoughts on that? Like trying to incorporate ways where, because sometimes I feel like that's a barrier where it's like, oh, no, I can't, I haven't got time to work out. You know, the, the kids need, the kids will get in my, or my dog will jump on me and stuff like that. I can't. So in order to, to make exercise a fun part so that it's not a barrier, it can, it can be done. You know, what, what advice would you give there to sort of try and go, okay, well, Maybe get the kids involved in in the whole exercise part of the journey. Yes, yeah, get the kids involved. It's first thing, and I think it it depends of everybody. But for some women, it might be, oh, my kids are used to wake up at eight, so I'm just going to work out at seven. You know, I'm just or doing their nap if they are really young. You know, is that time for their nap? So I'm gonna take uh, forty five minutes or thirty minutes, even just for myself to work out. Or do it, uh, yes, with the kids around and just depending on the kids, of course, because some kids are going to walk out for five minutes and they're done, you know, they don't have the same, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. they don't, yeah, 
So it uh, might be just uh, give them toys and they stay around and or some coloring to do. I mean, incorporate it with her time. But just understand that it's her time. The mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. they're smart. They understand. They say, okay, it's mommy's time to take care of myself. So I'm able to be better and stronger for you for later. Mm -hmm. And so it's important because I know moms usually, they're like, oh, yeah, I can't take that on for me. I have to take care of my kids. I have mm -hmm. to take care of mm -hmm. my first burn. I have to do that. And, uh, they have, it's like in the airplane, you have to take the oxygen for yourself first to be able to help others. So just take that, take that time. It can be, uh, uh, like I said, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. It doesn't have to do a, to be a two hours uh, workout. Just take that time for yourself. And That's really to, important. I tend to find that I, I say the same where I'm like, I understand the pressures that a mum has, um, you know, and I, I've said this many times, the busiest job in the world, being a mum, I don't care what anyone says, right? It, it is. And I've watched my wife do it. Um, my wife works loads of hours, but, uh, you know, um, and I've seen it. Uh, my mum was a single mum, pretty much raised me on her own, you know, so I, I've witnessed it my whole life. But... Um, you hit the nail on the head where it's like, yes, but your health needs to have some priority too because I've said this many times, without your health, what good are you to be, to help the, the other, what to do your kids or, you know, if you don't take that time for yourself, you're not going to have that benefit to people. And I think like you said before about, you know, mum time and, and stuff and, and they and them understanding that this is this is mum having looking after her i think that's a i think that's a good message as well for kids to see at a young age where it's like look okay go you know go and play now so mum's just going to have some time to mm -hmm. quickly work on herself and her health so that she can be you know entertaining and, and and fit and healthy to 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 keep up with you i think that's a good message for children to take in at an early age to see you because then when they get to that age when they're 16 and they're at, they're asking the dreaded question how do i get abs <laughs> they are because my daughter's seen her mum work doing my workouts or, or doing yoga and stuff like that and it's a good message to for the kids to see at a young age of okay, mum is having her time now where she needs to look after her health so that she can be fun mum, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and keep you guys going. Yeah, because I, I learned, like I said, uh, early because it's when my son had this issue and I saw that I completely let myself down and I was, all my energy was for my kids, my husband and myself, I was like nothing, you know, I was... Uh, I didn't have any strength. I was, like I said, I was depressed. I was, so what good I was to my kids? What example? Because the kids do and they do what you, they see, what would you, the parents doing. So which kind of example was I? So yes, I was doing everything for them, but myself, I was, I was not great. I'm not great at all. So starting more, taking time, just 45 minutes a day, just for myself. At the end, it helped them too. And now I see my kids, they're 10 and 12 years old now, and they, they boys, they love to fight, they love to race. And I'm so glad that I'm able to race with them, you know, and I'm like, my goal is to stay strong and be able to beat them as long as I can. <laughs> because, and it's amazing to, you know, to be able to, to race my kids, my sons, and not feeling tired. So it's, yes, I'm feeling better, and they are happy because yeah. they, they also now, gain from that. If we had someone listening now, Marinda, that it's like, okay, I'm hearing you guys, you know, I want to work on myself. I, I want to start, you know, making some changes, want to get in a bit better shape or not even necessarily lose weight, just get fitter, stronger, healthier, um, happier. Um, what if there was to say, okay, but I'm hearing all the stuff that you guys are saying, but it, it's quite a lot to take in. I just want a starting point. So if you could summarize now and give, give, give someone listening to this or, you know, a busy mom that's wanting to work on themselves, what would be your quick tip to get started? It's like, okay, 
to, just to slow things down, start now. A couple of simple things. Here's where you would, you know, what would you personally suggest to a mum listening to this now and going, this is what you want to do. If you want to start working on yourself, go do this. Yes, yeah, sure. So first of all, first thing I start always is find your why, like your mindset. Why do you want to lose weight or why do you want to to be in shape? Because that's important. It's not just, oh, I don't want to lose weight, you know, I just want that. That's it. It's so easy to change the way you're doing it because you just, you have to have a why, a strong why. Why do I want to do that? So if you have a real reason, it's deep into you, it's your, it's my my goal it's that so it's easier for you then like i said it doesn't have to be complicated or not stressful just try to make the point to move your body every day um just go out walk with your kids uh go to the playground and actually play with your kids not just sat on the bench um do some some movement some exercise um or I always recommend if you don't know anything about working out, it's great to get a personal trainer or a coach or to make sure you're not injuring yourself and do exercises that are actually personalized for yourself. Because if you had a C-section or any health issues, of course, you can't do any crazy workouts. You can find any YouTube videos and follow on. It's not made for everybody. But uh, yeah, just move your body. Just do some exercise. Um, uh, the nutrition also just I mean everybody knows what's wrong what's good like if you're eating snacks all day long you know it's bad for you you I don't have to tell you that so just make small also what's important to make small meals all or all through the day always get some protein some some fibers and some, some veggies um of course if you want a piece of chocolate and sometimes get it i mean it's not doesn't like it doesn't have to be perfect and um uh, just yeah move and make time for yourself that's really important as a mom you have to take time for yourself i mean there will be a lot of moms that hopefully are a bit more motivated and realize actually it's quite simple to start you know you, you don't have to doesn't have you don't have to get a big list of stuff to do you don't have to do everything at once just start small some of the tips that marine was sharing there you know just start with those little bits and start building up as you get more confident as you get a bit more familiar with the time and, and it becomes part of your day-to-day -day routine then start adding a bit more like marie said earlier depending on your goal if you then want to start building muscle perhaps then you can start getting equipment or, or start going to the gym if, if you have the time for it but there's no pressure you know if you're just someone who wants to start losing a bit of weight or get a bit fitter there's many little things you can do to to start it doesn't have to be you know because i tend to find that marine where people are all or nothing right it's that mentality exactly. where they're, they're just like but right i'm going to cut chocolate out i'm going to start eating free five times a day i'm going to start exercising i'm going to join the gym i'm going to quit alcohol and, and they've put so much pressure on themselves within a yeah. within three days they've given up because it's too much change we, we, we're habitual creatures humans um and when you add on the fact a busy mom with all the, it's not just yourself you're thinking about slow it slow things down you know it's not going to happen o overnight so take some yes. of the tips that Marie was sharing there, because I do think that I do think they'll be beneficial to anyone who who's starting their journey. So, Marie, what's next? For, what's next for you? What's what's you know you've 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 built this business here. You, you've had your own experience, and now you're helping um, you know moms do do the same thing. You know what what's sort of next for you in in your personal journey? Uh, well, for my personal journey, it's. For me, I just continue. I mean, like I said, I'm working, I'm working out and just feel good. I mean, I want to be healthy, feel strong and uh, share that with my kids, of course, and uh, continue working with moms, sharing, helping more moms to go through those tough uh, times. Yeah. Um, right. So. Where can people go and check out, um, check you out, Marine? Uh, 
on Instagram, Facebook, um, where can they go and check you yes, out and learn Instagram, a little bit more about you? Uh, Instagram, Facebook, we're at uh, Marine C. Buyer. I have my uh, mom's journey to strength uh, page too. So people can go check it out and you can message me. I'm always happy to help. Brilliant. Awesome stuff. And I will plug those links in the show notes on the episode as well. Um, make sure to go give Maureen a follow um, and go check her out too. Um, Maureen, thank you very much for coming on today. Um, I know we had some uh, we had some technical issues yesterday and today, but mm. we've got there. We've, we've managed to get, get it done. Um so uh, yeah, thank you very much for for getting in contact to yep. uh, and then and, and coming on because um, we have we have a similar audience. We have the same audience, so I know yes. that a lot of people would have benefited from your your words of wisdom today. Um, and it, a lot of the stuff, what I like as well, when I get guests on that have the same core values and, and beliefs and, and teaching styles as me, is it validates the stuff that I've been telling them. If, if that makes sense, because it's in, in an industry where there's so much conflicting information, it's good to have someone on, on my show who basically says the same things I've been saying, albeit with a, your own personal spin and, and, and yes. things that they may have not heard before. But it validates the, the things I've been telling people, which, look, this is a simple simple process. You don't have to do diet plans. You don't have to go and do this. You can start small. Weight loss is a very simple case of move more, eat less. Obviously, it's not that easy. Otherwise, we'd all be yeah. walking around with abs. But the concept is simple. It's the method of which we approach it that's the hard part. And I think if you find what works for you, um, you can get there. We, we can work there. So I always get people to do this t- towards the end of the, 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 the show, Marina. I don't know if you ever used to watch Jerry Springer, right, or if you ever saw it. Um, it's a kid right but but jerry springer big chat show in america right i think i think he passed away now but basically he he used to do this thing at the end which was jerry's final thought right (laughs) so what i tend to do is get my guests to go okay the spotlight is yours now in a just a, a, a 60 second final thought to sum up um to my listeners and i'm going to put you on the spot right and I'm going to give you a countdown. Go right. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Final four. Okay. So I just want to say that for the moms, um, what you're doing, it's amazing for your family. I know what you, you're doing. We're dealing with so much things. But it's really important to put your, 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 yourself first. For sometimes <laughs> just a few, like we said, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, one hour per day. Just take that time for yourself. It's going to be so much worth it for you and for your family. Everybody is going to gain from that. Um, mm-hmm. So, and it's just do stuff. Don't stress about it. Don't uh, try to overthinking. Uh, don't uh, try to do uh, all those uh, really crazy, difficult workouts and uh, or crazy diets. Just do something easy, fun. Cook some healthy meals with your kids. Um, just move with your kids, go for a run, go to the playground. Um, don't overthinking. Yeah. It's, it has, it doesn't have to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be, uh, a fun journey. <laughs> there you go. You handled that very well. <laughs> Some of the guests, they crumble a little bit. Like, uh, uh, uh. Um, right. Awesome, awesome words of wisdom there, Marine. Thank you very Thank you. much for coming on. It was lovely to chat to you. Um, you. As I said, you can go follow Marine. I will post the links to her social media in the description on the show notes. Um, as always, guys, make sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube, hit that follow button on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Um, and if you have any questions that you'd like me to forward on to Marine in the future, um, then please send them. Uh, email me on my, on my email, um, which is included, and then I can always follow on too if you want extra advice. Or better yet, go and give her a follow and feel free to ask her questions yourself and she'll be able to answer. So thank you very much, Maureen. All the best um, for for with everything. Um, and hopefully you, you we, can, we can both continue to keep helping mums, you know, 
going forward and smashing their fitness journeys. Yes, thank you for having me today. Take care. You too, take care.